So hi, my name is Sam Illingworth. I'm a senior lecturer in science communication at the University of Western Australia, where I head up the science communication unit with my colleague, Dr. Heather Bray. And we're very unique in that we offer undergraduate and postgraduate qualifications in um, science communication. And Heather and myself over the past year have been developing a citizen science unit that we teach to our masters in science communication students. And that's just run. And so I'm just going to feed back on some of the successes and the next steps for that project. If anyone's got any questions, please do follow up with me via email or via Twitter. And again, I'd like to acknowledge my um, colleague, Dr. Heather Bray, in helping me to put together this programme. So we, when we were designing the programme, really, obviously, we started with the learning outcomes. So for those of you who are used to pedagogy and higher education, on the right, we have a list of Bloom's taxonomy, which basically states that the further up the triangle we go, the more we're expecting students to engage in deep learning. Um, so, you know, at the very bottom level, we expect students to remember things and then at the top, we expect them to create something. So in terms of the learning outcomes for this program, we wanted them to, you know, think about really evaluating citizen science projects. Are they citizen science projects? Are they crowdsourcing? We want them to plan and a successful and engage in citizen science project themselves. And then also to evaluate key tensions and issues with citizen science projects and the broader social and scientific context in which they sit. So basically in this program, we wanted them to assess what are citizen science projects, how can they design their own, and what are some of the barriers and potential solutions to that within the wider academic sphere. In terms of the assessments, we then um, critically aligned these to the learning objectives. So basically they've got to do a report that evaluates the effectiveness of one or several citizen science projects. They have to do a mock grant application, for the development and implementation of their own citizen science project. And then they have to write an essay that evaluates key tensions across the citizen science sphere. And this is really cool because, you know, yes, it's getting them to write essays, but it's also getting them to genuinely experience what it's like to write a grant application, which we know is one of the biggest barriers that faces early career researchers and people who want to go into um, applying for grants. And so those people who are interested in citizen science more broadly as well. In terms of feedback from the students, what they've thought about this unit so far, they've really enjoyed the diversity of the approach. So um, it, each week we kind of introduce a new topic. It's a flipped learning style, by which I mean, we have pre-recorded videos that the students watch. And then we have a two hour weekly workshop where we come together to discuss some of the key learnings in those um, videos and also to critique um, different readings, different papers, etc. And the students really enjoy that. Um, they find applying for grants hard, who'd have thought it, but this is a really important um, learning experience for them and for us as well. And I know it's certainly, as I've been marking their grant applications, it's made me think about my own. There's real agency in choosing topics. So we tell the students they can pick any citizen science project they want to critique and any citizen science project they want to develop. And some of them have chosen some amazing subjects which have really got into the heart of what it is for them as students, for them as citizens and for them as scientists, which really enables them to explore and identify their own hats, their own personas and where they fit in this beautiful mishmash of publics that are in the citizen science space. And what we've also found is that many of the projects that the students have been analysing claim to be citizen science, but perhaps they're not. And, and one of the frameworks we use for assessing this are the 10 principles of citizen science that the Australian Citizen Science Association share, and which also came out of the um, book and project that Kobe spoke about, um, the whole book rather than that specific chapter. So the next steps for this project then really are for us to continue to develop links with the Australian Citizen Science Association. Our students' um, top essays are going to be featured as blogs on the website, which we're really, really excited about. We need to include more Indigenous knowledge um, and we're working with the School of Indigenous Knowledge and the School of Indigenous Studies at the University of Western Australia to do this in a meaningful way, not just as a token gesture, because it's vital that the students understand and the lecturers understand how important this is for the construction of knowledge knowledge and then just a general invitation for others to collaborate if you want to get involved in this problem program if you want to come and speak if you want to find out about it please get in contact with me follow me on twitter at sam Illingworth. 
email me at sam.ellingworth at uwa.edu.au. Thank you all so much for this opportunity to speak and I look forward to continuing this conversation online and elsewhere. Thank you.